All right, I'm going to see if I can make this thing work a little better this time. I uh, tried to do a video the other night, and now I think I got the camera working the way I want to, uh, at least uh, halfway. Um, I'm going to show off a few things, and I uh, might uh, be a little man uh, manual. Uh, this is Tracy Bingham, uh, Lightning Bug, and I'm mainly doing this to show some things to Ken Kenimer. Uh, and hopefully uh, be able to uh, upload this to uh, YouTube or email it uh, and uh, get some information. What I'm doing is uh, uh, I know that uh, a lot of folks out there have some issues with not failure. Uh, and uh, I saw some uh, YouTube uh, video uh, when I was doing some research on tying knots, looking at different types of snail knots and uh, other kinds of knots. and uh, Guy in Australia uh, had a uh, way of doing it, um, not using the nail or snail knot tool. Uh, uh, it was uh, pretty neat. Uh, but one of the things that caught my eye was he did something uh, with the eye of the hook uh, that uh, uh, just made me think. Uh, when you look at the eye of the hook, and if you'll just give me a little bit, be a little patient here. Uh, while I do a little bit of zooming, hopefully zooming. Uh, the camera control is not doing what I want it to do. So I'm going to show you. Let's put it up here a little closer uh, to show you. Uh, if you look at the shank of the hook, uh, you're going to see that... There's a little gap right there where the uh, eye comes in and meets the shaft. Well, that's kind of sharp right there. And your line, if you do a nail or snail knot, uh, whatever you want to call it, it rubs up against it. And after a period of time, it can wear a spot in that hole uh, in, in your line and cause it to fail and break. So uh, what he was doing, he had a little piece of uh, um, uh, tubing that he had run his line into and brought it down the shaft and the knot he tied allowed him to tie that around that tubing and that protected it there. Well, I tried to do something similar and was not very successful and part of it is because uh, it's a little bit more difficult to do that, at least it was to me. Uh, so I got to thinking, you know what? Shrink tubing. That'll work pretty good. So I decided to use a little bit of shrink tubing and see if I could uh, do something very similar uh, to that uh, same thing. So when it's uh, uh, all done, this is kind of what it would look like. So I'm going to kind of go through that uh, real quick, what I do with shrink tubing uh, and how I uh, put it on. Uh, basically, uh, for the hooks here, the size of the eye, this is quarter inch uh, shrink tubing. And I take, uh, and just basically, uh, first you want to just slip it on there, get it about, you know, that far up. You want it long enough up in there to cover the, uh, you know, the, the, where it meets, and a little bit up on the shaft. If there's a problem uh, with it, you can always uh, cut it and redo it or trim it back. And I always cut this, try to cut it a little bit long. If you look up in there, you'll see, uh, you know, the eye of the hook. Then I just take and uh, use cigarette lighter to, uh, uh, or a lighter, uh, to uh, shrink it up around it. Don't use anything like a torch or anything with real high heat. Uh, that could uh, uh, cause the annealing of the shaft uh, to, uh, um, well, it'll make it, make it where it's soft and then your shaft, the shaft of your hook could break on you. So if you just take that and do that, uh, you'll see that it uh, makes a nice little uh, cover for where the eye meets uh, the shaft right there. And now you don't have a problem with that rubbing on your line. Just set that aside for a couple of seconds. Let it uh, uh, cool down. I've got a couple here I've already done. And so... You don't want to cut a hole in there where the eye is. You want to use a nail or something. I've got a little tool here, like a dental tool, and I take and I poke a little hole in it, 
right about, you know, right in the center. Kind of poke that through. Take it around. Poke it on the other side. Just like that. And then, there you go. Uh, so, the knot that he was using uh, was the other interesting thing that I, uh, that I noticed. Let me get some line off here. This is a 60 pound to 60, yep, yeah, 60 pound, and I'm using hurricane salt tackle. Now this is, you use whatever leader you want. This is for my leader, um, uh, and I'm going to be using this for some cat fishing. And you can do it for any fishing. Uh, uh, you know, if you're trying to catch some big, uh, uh, big fish, uh, but this particular uh, uh, knot uh, is uh, without the tool, kind of like the snail knot. You just push it ease it right in the, there pull it right at through Give yourself a lot of you know a lot of line to work with and here's what what he did he took it you see right there just running down the shaft if you had the tool uh, you'd be kind of doing the same thing uh, then he made a loop kind of like that so took the loop and then you hold the loop down the shaft right here and then you take and you start your winding, whichever direction you like to do it, wind it back up the shank of the hook. It's me, you know, several times. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever you like to do. I'm trying to do this, hold steady at the same time. Now I'm not doing this with a tool. Actually the tool, when I use it, my hands aren't as nimble as they used to be, uh, fingers anyway, and they get a little tired after a second or two. So uh, uh, this was a little easier for me to tie. So then once you get that done, you just run it right back through that loop. All right. Now with the tool, you normally really jerk it real fast right there. This time, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to kind of ease it up real slow, kind of like that. Now, I wet it a little bit so that it doesn't uh, burn uh, as it comes down. If it heats up, that can weaken the line, too. So you just take it and you're going to pull that. And then you're just going to pull it on up. Let it uh, come on up like that. If you do the other uh, with the tool, pull it good and tight. You got your tag in. And take your clippers and... Uh, Put that little tag end off. Like that. There you go. Uh, now, you tie whatever knot. I'm not here to cause controversy on what kind of knot you like or don't like. Uh, what's the best knot? Uh, this works for me. Uh, I've caught some very, very big fish with it. And... Uh, uh, I'm satisfied. It's a good knot, and I think a big part of that is, uh, and the reason a lot of folks lose fish is because of where that eye meets. It rubs against it, and this is going to prevent that. Uh, and uh, in if you do see a failure and it breaks, and you haven't done something to uh, to cover that up or or work that in, uh, if it breaks, you'll probably see something like a little curly cue left on the end of your line. And it's a good possibility, uh, the reason it broke. Um, not always, it could just be the line itself. Was well, It was just sitting there over a period of time, and it could just be on one fishing trip and rubbing on that spot. So hopefully that's something that uh, makes sense, and uh, if you like it, give it a try.